So you may have tried intermittent fasting or been wondering about doing longer fasts. But what about fasting for 382 days without consuming any solid food? In 1965, a 27-year-old man named Angus Barbary made history by undertaking the longest fast ever recorded. And now 60 years later, his record still stands. He lasted an astonishing 382 days without eating any solid food. How did he survive? And what does the science of nutrition have to say about this extreme form of fasting? Should we all try doing long fasting or can we get some of these benefits by integrating different practices into our daily routine. Hello and welcome to Planet Nutrition. My name is Luke. I'm a nutritionist and I work with my clients to help them improve their health. One of the strategies that we use sometimes is fasting and I'm passionate about helping people use science-backed tools to improve their well-being. Today we'll dive into the fascinating true story of Angus Barbary's fast that lasted over an entire year and explore what science reveals about fasting and its effects on our body. So in 1960, Angus Barbary weighed 456 pounds or 207 kilograms. He worked at his parents' fish and chip shop and obviously struggled being in that environment and gained a lot of weight. It got to the point where it was causing significant disturbances in his life. And there was even a case where he went to the British Home Championship in Wembley Stadium, where because of his size, he couldn't fit through the turnstile. He was let through the back door. And while he was escorted through the gate by a police guard, people waiting in line took advantage of the police not being there. And many fans without tickets took that opportunity to enter into the stadium. Angus undertook his fast in an intelligent way. He did it with medical supervision. I don't recommend doing something this extreme by yourself because you do really need to know what you're doing. He worked with doctors at Maryfield Hospital in Dundee, Scotland, and he embarked on what would be the longest fast ever recorded by a human. During his fast, he consumed only water, tea, coffee, and vitamin supplements. No solid food for 382 days. Astonishingly, during his fast, he lost 276 pounds or 125 kilograms, and he reached a healthy weight, which was his goal of 180 pounds or 82 kilograms. And so how was Angus able to do this, to go without eating food for such a long period of time? Surely this is impossible and he would have starved. Fascinatingly, Angus's fast succeeded because the human body is designed to adapt to periods without food. If you can imagine our ancestors, maybe they were hunting and gathering food and sometimes there was a lot of food around. And then in other periods, maybe during winters or whatever, we didn't always have access to enough food. And so our body is actually able to switch its fuel source to using our body's stored fat for fuel. And that is why our bodies store fat, because in the past, it was incredibly important. If we had more fat, we could survive periods, days, weeks without food. And it's only now that we find ourselves in such an unnatural modern environment that it's kind of becoming a problem. But the fact that our bodies can store fat is what allowed our ancestors to survive. This process of switching energy, it's called ketosis. And you might've heard of this if you've heard of like the keto diet. This is people trying to kind of mimic this effect while also eating food. They're eating fat and burning the fat that they eat rather than the fat on the body. And so Angus would have been in a state of ketosis throughout his fast where his body was burning its stored energy. And because he had so much, he actually found after a few days, he was no longer hungry. He didn't plan to fast for this long, but he just wanted to keep going because he was feeling really good and he didn't feel like he needed to eat anything. And while Angus's fast is an incredibly extreme example, a lot of us might be able to get some of these benefits of having periods without food by doing something like intermittent fasting. So shortening down the period in the day that we're eating food, maybe eating breakfast just a little bit later if that feels all right, and maybe eating dinner a little bit earlier. So eating from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., for example, 8 a.m., 6 p.m., 10 a.m., 8 p.m., about a 10 to 12 hour eating window seems to be quite good. And it's quite easy to achieve for most of us. And 
Another reason why Angus's fast was successful is because he did it under medical supervision, and this is critical here. During his fast, he regularly underwent tests with medical professionals, like blood tests, to ensure that his body was still functioning correctly and that he wasn't damaging his health in any way. It's important to note here that when we are burning our body's fat for fuel, we get the energy we need, but for our metabolism, we also need lots of vitamins and minerals that we get from our diet. And so while we can survive several days, potentially even several weeks fasting without this, like our ancestors probably had to, to do a fast like Angus, he needed to have external vitamin supplements that gave his body the nutrients that he needed so that he could stay healthy. It wouldn't have been possible to do a fast this long, just surviving on our body stored energy without some external source of vitamins and minerals. And other research has shown this as well, that fasting in supervised clinical environments can be really safe and effective to help with weight loss. For example, a 2019 study found that participants fasting in an environment like this helped to improve their blood pressure and a lot of their markers for health that you can see in a blood test, as well as their well-being. So they were feeling better afterwards as well. But basically all this to say is if you are wanting to try fasting, it's worth knowing what you're doing. Because while fasting can be safe if it's done properly, you can also run into problems if you're not doing it properly. So it's great to talk with someone with some expertise, like a nutritionist or a dietitian. And so, what was the long-term impact on Angus's health? Did he really improve his health? Or did this long fast deplete his body and make him more sick or susceptible to other diseases? So beyond weight loss, Angus likely improved his metabolic health as well. So we know that living with obesity also increases our risk of metabolic conditions like diabetes. So he probably helped to really reduce his risk of diabetes and heart disease and improve his metabolic health overall. And some interesting things about fasting is it promotes things like autophagy. And you can imagine this like our body turning on its recycling machine. It's like we've got all of these old cells and things that we don't really need anymore, but they kind of just sit around. And when we're fasting, our body becomes really efficient and it doesn't want to waste anything basically. So it can help to kind of use up all of this stuff, clear out all of the old gunk. It can help to improve our metabolic health, lower our blood pressure, help improve our health, potentially reducing inflammation and markers of aging as well. It's still quite a new field of research, but it's something that's super interesting, especially when it comes to its potential effects on longevity and health as we age. And there are some studies proving this as well, that fasting can improve markers of aging and inflammation. Again, it's just another tool in the toolbox. So we wanna have a healthy diet, we wanna make sure we're sleeping well, we wanna make sure we're moving our body, and maybe we can also add in some fasting into that regimen if we want to as well. And so while Angus's story is incredibly interesting, we don't necessarily need to do something so extreme to get some of the benefits. Something that's pretty accessible to most of us is intermittent fasting, where we can get some of these benefits by reducing down our eating window and going longer without food. We can also try longer fasts, like a 36 hour fast, for example. Fasting is something that I love to do. I find it's really beneficial for me especially for just being present with my body and it really helps me not just in a physical health sort of way but in reframing how I look at life when we don't have enough food it makes us incredibly grateful for what we do have and while there are still a lot of people in the world that don't have access to enough food these days so many of us do have access to probably more food than we need and so really getting in touch with how much our body really needs and being really grateful for the food that we do have. We're so lucky if we have access to enough food. This has been the dream of all of our ancestors for such a long time. Fasting can be a great time to check in with ourselves, reflect on what's important and slow down, calm down our nervous system. And if you are interested in giving longer fasting a try, this is the work I do with my clients and you can learn more at the link in the description. I'd love to help you out if that's something that you're interested in. And if you're fascinated and wanna learn more about this, check out the video in the annotation, wherever it is, where I talk more about intermittent fasting, improving your metabolic health and how you can easily integrate this into your life.